You are listening to KC Sports Network, the number one podcast network for today's Kansas City sports fans. With former players from your favorite teams, informed perspectives, and former insiders, this is the place for you. KC Sports Network is proudly presented by Emprise Bank, your partner in Possible. All right, folks, what's good? We are back. Uh, another episode, Ain't No Seats podcast, and tonight, B-Turn, we're not going to talk football. We got a, we had a bye week. It was good, much needed, um, but we got to talk hoops. People forget. The Hawks won a national title, and the banner's hanging, and all of a sudden we got an exhibition game Thursday. It seems crazy, but the season is here. Um, we got Duke in a few weeks, so it's, it's crazy. It, went, it feels like yesterday we won the national title, but we got a whole new group, different-look yeah. team, still an exciting team, still a top-five team. Like, Isn't it kind of wild that it feels like a team that – I don't know. With so many question marks, like I don't have crazy expectations, but we're still a top five team. Like that just shows how well Bill Self has this thing rolling. Yeah. And there's never going to be any worries or doubt in my mind with Bill Self at the helm. Like you're always going to have a chance to be the worst seed he's been in the tournament is a four. He's always, he's had a ton of ones, a ton of twos. I, I just, I was tweeting about it. Uh, I think I'm sure you saw that on Twitter the other night. Those guys that weren't too high on our team. Oh, yeah. um, so I was tweeting to, that, to them just about how much KU lost in 2008. You lose every single starter Russ, Mario, B Rush, Shady, Darnell. You lose Sasha, you lose Roderick mm-hmm. Stewart, and then you come back, you go 14 and 2 in the Big 12 in 2009. I think we started um, Tyshawn and Marcus Morris started. Sharon was obviously the guy. Cole was pretty good, but he was young. He didn't yeah. play much on the title team. That team goes 14-2. and two. I believe they were three in the tournament. They ended up making the Sweet 16. They kind of choked against Michigan should State. Have been, honestly, that team should have gone to a Final Four. If they <laughs> close that Michigan State game out, they, go to, they, they win that Elite Eight game, and they're going to a Final Four. Like It's crazy what that team became. Yeah, and so Bill Bill just finds a way. They'll end up competing to win a Big 12 title. They'll be a good seed in the tournament. And Jay Will is obviously a first-team preseason All-Big 12 guy. Um, they got they got a great recruiting class, a bunch of five-stars. Dewan is one of Bill's favorite players of all time. Kevin McCuller is going to be one of his favorites. So I think this team could be really good defensively. They hope Jay Will can be an All-American type guy for this team to be really good. And we just need our bigs probably to – develop yeah. which bill i think bill's one of the best developers of talent in the entire country if not the best yeah i mean it if you compare this team to the 09 team that came off i would say this team has it's hard to say because that team had sharon collins who's one of the all-time greats um and it had cole aldridge but we did not know yet that cole aldridge was gonna be the star i mean we hope that was the expectation but cole aldridge if you look back had one of the best what is it? I can't remember the stat. Somebody will tweet it at me. He had like one of the best statistical or efficient seasons of like the Bill Self era. Like he was just so good. Um, he had both a, ends of the floor. He had a triple double in the first weekend of the tournament that year in 09. Yeah. Blocks, yeah, rebounds, I mean, uh, points. So it's hard for me to say in a weird way, I feel like this team returns more maybe kind of i don't know because that other team was so young i mean you had tyshawn and more marcus and mark that starting bench. five yeah but this year you got dewan back you got jalen back jalen to me is kind of like the sharon of this yeah. year's team like he was the guy that played big minutes um he's the guy that is now expected to take over and be the main guy and Dewan in a weird way, they're complete opposites, but like Dewan has to be the Cole Aldridge, I think, where Dewan has to kind of take a step this year and no, maybe not. I don't know. I would be interested to hear your thoughts. Does Dewan need to be like a, does he need to take a big step or can he still kind of fall back into that just role that he's been in, which is just play good defense, be scrappy. I don't know. I feel like we need Dewan for this team to be good for him to take another step. Yeah, I think we need him to take a step for sure, scoring wise. And I think I don't know how you feel. I know Bill talked about this. He knocks down open jumpers. People leave him open. He he knocks down his fair amount of jumpers. Um, I just think this team needs to find shooters. I know he's hyped up Grady, saying he could be one of the best shooters KU's had or KU's seen, which is wild to me. We've had some pretty good players, but 
Dewan, yeah, I think he'll step up as a scorer, and he's always going to do the little things, the way he impacts games. And if we have to defend him on this pod all year, it's going to get really annoying because yeah. after you watch him, what he did to Caleb Love and R.J. Davis in the championship game, and he's just unreal. The, thing, the way he can impact a game, the way he guards, the way – he facilitates the way he gets guys open looks. He's just the ultimate winner. Like he's going to do whatever it takes to win. He's kind of like a quiet assassin. Doesn't say much, just goes about his business, gets things done. But I feel like you'll agree with this. Um, and I feel like you've said this before, but we just always have guys that need to step up, step up yeah. every year. It's crazy. Like I remember KU 2011, we, we choke against VCU. Obviously it sucked. We should have won a natty. We're going into 2012 and, there's a lot of question marks that felt like Relaford hadn't played a ton. T-Rob was still coming off the bench in 2011. Tyshawn obviously started for a couple of years. So Tyshawn was really the only proven guy. You had Jeff who didn't play much against VCU or yeah. that year against VCU. So you had one starter back um, and then they just step up. I remember talking to my dad before that 2012 year. And he's like, man, and there's, there's been many years where KU fans have done this because we lose a lot. We get a lot of new faces. And my dad was like, man, this I don't know if we'll be that good this year. I feel like we might suck. And then KU makes it to the national title game. Tyshawn talks about 2012 where Bill Self just absolutely coached his ass off. And I think this year could be one of those years because they're going to have to be really good defensively. But I think Bill just finds a way, and there's certain years where he does coach his ass off. He's always going to be an amazing coach, yeah. but I think there's years where you have to be – <clears throat> or you do it's, have to coach your ass off. It's definitely these years where there are question marks, right? Like 20, 2009, I mean, that dude coached his ass off. Uh, 14 and 2 in the league. Yeah, after losing to what? Who'd we lose? Davidson that year at the Sprint Center. We lost, I mean, just had some bad early season losses, which Syracuse can happen. Yeah, Syracuse. Johnny Flint, was, they were good, though. That was so annoying. That was a fun game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, you're right. KU, that's why KU is what they are, is guys just step up. And that's my biggest question is I don't have a doubt of will new guys or will guys like Yesifu or Pettiford or Clements, will – I don't have a question of will someone step up, but it's, I'm more curious on who's it going to be. Somebody that did not play big minutes last year – will have an awesome season this year. Yeah. And I don't I, I think in my opinion, I'd be curious what you say. My choice, if I had to pick, I would hope it's Zach Clements. Like mm -hmm. I think that is our biggest question mark this season heading into it the year. It's what kind of I think the chatter was about after that Illinois scrimmage was man, this team's got talent, but they do not have a five man right now. That's like the clear cut five. And so to me, I want Clements he he stepped in and played good minutes at times last year, but I want him to take He's not going to take a Cole Aldridge type step, but I want him to take a step where he's a truly reliable starter. Like yeah. a guy you can count on to go get 10 and six, seven. I don't know. Yeah. And I think that, I think that for sure is the answer because I think you have four locked in starters right now and you have big question marks at the five. They talk, he's talked about the potential with Zuby and Ernest. Um, he likes their potential, but obviously they probably won't be ready to go day one maybe ready by big 12 play, but Zach obviously has the potential to stretch the floor, knock down threes. I mean, we've seen, we've seen the potential from Zach. He came in last year. Um, I forget who it was against at home. It was a big 12 game at home where he came in and kind of gave us some big minutes in a big, big 12 that game. Oklahoma game. Yeah. yeah. Oklahoma at home. So yeah, the five, the five spots, the biggest question mark they've talked about cam, which cam could I'm, I'm not sure there's four locked in starters. I feel like if I had to guess cam might be the starter on Thursday night against Pitt state, but I don't, really? cause I don't know. I don't know who, maybe it's Zach. I've heard that Zach's would be kinda... a bill self move. Just give it to the older guy, like mm -hmm. oldest guy. Yeah. I can cause see that. I've heard, I mean, Zach's great. I think his potential, I think his ceiling's pretty high, but I've heard he's kind of struggled at practice a little bit um, just from a physicality standpoint too. So I'm not sure if Ernest will – obviously, Ernest and Zuby, I don't know if they'll be ready to go. Zach, I think, could give – I mean, I think he could be the X factor, absolutely, the way he can shoot it, the yeah. way he can rebound. And I feel like he doesn't make mistakes. We talked about that last year. Like, he doesn't come in and really make mistakes. He doesn't take terrible shots. Um, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I think Cam could be the starter. He's 
he po- obviously played at Missouri Southern for a couple or for four or five years, whatever he sat and uh, he sat out last year, but was under Bill self system for a year. So I don't know. Obviously I think Grady, Kevin McCuller, Dewan, Jay will are four of the locked in starters. I don't know who will start at the five, but yeah. our bigs are obviously a, our biggest question mark right now. And if they can figure that out, I think this KU team could be really, really damn good by conference play. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like you said, Zach, the offense isn't going to be a question for me. He's going to be a shooter. He's going to be good. But can he bang inside against Big 12 talent? And, mm-hmm. like, I mean, we played Duke in a few weeks. Can Zach Clements handle that? But the problem is, Ernest, like, to me, Ernest obviously has the most upside of any of our bigs. For sure. Uh, maybe you could argue Zach, too, just the way he can shoot it. But when it comes to just pure center, pure Bill Self system, Ernest – just fits the mold. I don't know if it's going to be this year, but one day Ernest Uday is going to be a stud under Bill Self. Like the dude catches <laughs> No lobs. question. He's just, you know it. He's one of those guys I can pencil in right now. He's going to be a stud under Bill Self. But I don't think it's going to be right away. So, yeah, I think Zach, um, I would like to see him step up from day one. I don't think, I think you could be right that Cam could start. But I don't, just... I don't think, and this is, there's some people that absolutely love Cam Martin. And I'm not not saying I don't believe in Cam, but like if we're if it's March and Cam Martin is still starting at the five, I'm probably not like I don't think we're a one seed if that's our lineup come March. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's a stud, but it's that's a big jump. I don't care if you sat out a year, it's a big jump to go from that level to this level. That's why we need one of Ernest, I don't, I couldn't, I don't sit there at the practices and watch the bigs. Maybe Zuby is going to surprise. Obviously Ernest is the higher ranked guy. He was a McDonald's guy, five star. So yeah, Ernest, if Ernest or Zach could step up and be a solid big, like just come in, give good minutes, rebound. That's why I think Ernest could be awesome energy wise. Mm -hmm. And Bill loves him just like personality wise and energy. And obviously you were talking about the lobs and stuff. So I think he could potentially be a rim protector and be a guy that can finish around the rim, uh, dunk on guys, catch lobs and things like that, and just get the team going at, from an energy standpoint. But yeah, I don't, I'm just personally saying if I had to pick a starter for Thursday night and I'm not saying all year, I would, I, I randomly think it's going to be cam. Maybe I'm, wrong. I don't hate that pick. You want to know what I think I could see Bill self doing. And I wish AB was here. Cause AB Five made guards. this prediction. No, it'll be KJ Adams. <laughs> We haven't even talked so, about yeah, him. So yeah, five guards. Like we haven't even I talked about Bill KJ. Just being like, you know what, KJ? I like that you try hard. You're good at defense. You're starting at the five, and I can see this being something where it's like week three of the season, and we're like, why is KJ still starting at the five? Like, what is going on? Remember when? Remember that season where Dave and Udoka were both starting together for like multiple weeks, and Twitter was just <laughs> imploding. Oh my Our god! Our spacing was disgusting, but like Unreal. that's what Bill Self does early. Like he's not. We obsess over the lineups, and he just does not care. I mean, Hunter Mickelson started the triple overtime game against Oklahoma. <laughs> like <laughs> lineups early oh are not going to matter. Um, so we'll see. I can no, see Cam. I can see KJ. Yeah. It, it, we didn't even talk about KJ. Why not KJ? I think he could be awesome defensively. I think he can bang down low. He gives you – I mean, he's incredible defensively. You saw him at the end of the first half in the Miami Elite Eight game against Cam McGussie, who was killing us. That yeah. defensive stop he had at the end of the half, I love KJ. Obviously, from an energy standpoint, too, he plays super hard, and he just wants it. There was rumors about him leaving in the offseason, and I don't know if those were real or not, but – he obviously stayed, and I would love to see KJ get a ton of minutes, and that kind of leads me into our bench. I think our bench could be super solid. A lot of guys could step up. Bobby Pettiford's dealt with a ton of injuries, getting, been kind of unlucky. Last year I think he would have been in the rotation good amount because Bill was obsessed with him on a national championship squad. Joe yeah. didn't play a ton. So I think Joe and Bobby I think could give us awesome minutes. Dewan's not going to leave. the. F- That's the thing with those two. Dewan and Kevin yeah. McCuller. How do those two leave the floor this year with Bill Self? Bill and Self Jaylen. is going to be. When does Jalen yeah. leave the floor? Yeah, well, those <laughs> those three, obviously. Um, Grady probably will. We haven't even talked about MJ Rice yet. Like yeah. our bench could be loaded. This could be, we always talk about, I mean, there's always random fans that say nine or 10 guys could play. Obviously, Bill gets his rotation down to a certain amount, seven or eight. Um, 
So there's going to be some talent left out. I mean, think about the bigs we already talked about. That's that's five bigs we just talked about. Zach, Zuby, Ernest, Cam, KJ. And then you got yeah. Grady who's going to start. MJ probably behind him. And then you got three guys that we just talked about that won't come off the floor with Jay Will, Dewan, and Kevin McCuller. Yeah, so, so, so you brought up how we always say, oh, we're so deep, we're so deep. But let's just – Let's just cut to the chase. In four or five months, we are not playing nine, ten guys. So realistically, we're playing the five. Let's call it this. Let's say it's it's Dewan, it's Jalen, it's Kevin, it's Grady, and it's let's just call it Zach. So there's our five. Then to me, I think you've got like this is where I kind of feel bad is I think it then becomes a battle of Bobby and Joe for a sixth spot. One of those guys to me is going to get left out, which sucks because they're both really talented and can be good. I hope I'm wrong. Maybe I am wrong. Maybe he does, but I don't know. I just, to me, one of them potentially gets left out because then MJ Rice, I think is he's too talented to just leave off the floor. I think he's mm-hmm. your seven guy. So then you're battling between is KJ not, I think KJ is getting the getting minutes and then Ernest there's, there's, eight and nine right there. Like it just, you run out so fast. And to me, Ernest has to get a little bit of minutes. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. I would hope he does just for development wise, but it, it really is wild to think that come yeah. February, March guys like Cam, Zuby, maybe Joe. I don't know. I hope yes. If steps up, I just, I don't know who's getting the minutes because like you said, the not coming off the floor Jalen's playing 35 plus Kevin McCullough is playing 35 plus. So like which guards and maybe MJ Rice doesn't get, maybe Joe gets more minutes than MJ Rice and maybe Pettiford gets more minutes than MJ Rice. I have no idea. It's just going to be crazy to see because there are a lot of bodies and there's a lot. I think there's a lot of opportunity. That's a good thing. I think those guys all have a chance to prove themselves, but I don't think they can all get minutes which sucks and it's shocking that more of them like you didn't see any transfers yeah dude yeah it's kind of wild thinking about our roster right now and i think it's hard to get to eight it really is and personally to start the year i really think we will struggle to score i don't see i don't see i don't think that's a crazy take at all i think obviously dewan dewan's amazing we love him he's not the most skilled scorer in the country jay will's gonna be probably 15 points plus a night i personally think and then McCuller, Dewan, like that. So basically, what I'm getting to is, I think we're gonna have to be really good defensively to start the year, and Bill's yeah. gonna have a hard time yanking any of those guys. So yeah, there's gonna be there's gonna be a bunch of talent left out, and as shitty as this sounds, there's probably gonna be one or two guys that wishes <laughs> wishes they might have transferred in the off season. Yeah, it's just which like sounds terrible, too. but I mean, <clears throat> I'm specifically thinking of a guy like because I'm thinking like Bobby. Joe. Bobby's like Bobby's a yeah. point guard, great point guard. He's a backup point guard, but is Dewan going to be taken out? Like, is Bobby going to come in and play the two next to Dewan yeah, for a little bit? And that's what's tough. You, I don't know. It, it sucks because both those guys are too good to just sit all year, and I don't think both of them will sit all year. But unfortunately, I just think early on we'll see a lot of them. They'll get their opportunities. But man, just knowing Bill Self, who is getting man. that? Who's getting the big minutes between those two? Because them all three playing is going to be tough when Dewan's playing. Dewan is going to play 39 minutes a game. He just is. You can't take him out of the game. <laughs> no, he's, Bill you can, won't. I mean, Bill, I'm sure Bill would tell you he's the best defender in the country. He's not going to pick another guy in the entire mm-hmm. country that's better than Dewan. I mean, Dewan's probably as good as anyone he's had. And he's had a ton yeah. of good defenders, and he's a great um, defensive coach, but yeah, I, don't, I mean, I have – I just wrote down our – I got 12 guys here who could play at a bunch of schools in the country. Dewan, Bobby, Grady, Joe Yesifu, Kevin McCuller, MJ Rice, Jalen, KJ, Zach, Cam, Ernest, and Zuby. Didn't even include Kyle Cuff, who like – Yeah. That's a guy I'm a little shocked came back because he's an athlete and I think he has a potential future in this program, but it's not this year, unfortunately, which I feel bad for him because he's a stud. I know, and it's oh man, I was at that. So, Bill, I was at the Bill Self that Top Golf event that you mm-hmm. weren't able to make it to, but he 
he made another joke about getting on Kyle Cuff's ass at practice, saying that they get yeah. on him all the time. And I'm like, I'm just sitting there like, dude, our point guard's going to play 40 minutes, and then Bobby's ahead of you. Yeah. Now, and so I don't want this pod to come off as us saying none of these guys are going to play, because I do think early on in the year, I think in the Duke game, I think maybe 10 to 12, I think 10 or 10 of those 12 guys you just named will probably, maybe 12 of those guys will play. I don't know. Like, I do think Who Bill's just going to. Bill's just going to throw them out there and see what happens, but we just know. We see this every year. Uh Come conference play, it's going to be eight guys, max, I think. What was – it might have been the first year we did this pod, maybe Grimes' freshman year, where I I remember this exact combo between me, you, and AB before the year talking about maybe – I don't. it had to have been that year because I think we were loaded. We thought we could do like a platoon Yeah, a Kentucky (laughs) thing. So we talked about that, and then – I think you were the one that brought us back to reality and we're like, guys, Bill Self has his rotation. It's going to be seven or eight, and it's always seven or eight. So I don't know. It's tough. There's 12, there's 12 guys that could play. Like, I mean, because think about that team. Charlie Moore and K.J. Lawson didn't get minutes hardly at all, and we yeah. thought those guys would play a ton. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'm sitting here thinking about MJ Rice. Obviously, it's a five-star, top 20 guy, McDonald's guy. You can't really – I mean, obviously, if he's struggling at the beginning of the year, he probably won't play. Eventually, he'll probably get it and play. But these college coaches need to play these five-star guys to get recruits. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you can't get a five-star top 20 guy and he comes here and shits the bed. I mean, we've had some, but you need those guys to play because that helps your program out. McDonald's guys, five stars, you see them succeeding as a freshman, you're going to get more recruits. So. Grady, they're obsessed. That's another guy, Grady. Dude, the staff, like, I can't even describe it. The staff is obsessed with him. Every single, every single person on the staff or that has to do with the program on the bench, Coach Q, Bouchard, Brady, everyone on the staff is just obsessed with Grady because he does everything right. He can shoot it. He's never going to kill you. He's just a stud. And so that's another guy that might not leave the floor. Yeah. I'm trying to get a list here uh i mean grady dick was the gatorade high school player of the year like if you think about other guys that have done that that's like lebron that's like dwight howard like these are now i'm not saying grady dick's gonna be those guys but like that's how good this dude was like that's how highly thought of he is and it, it kind of blows my mind because that's not the vibe I got early on when we were recruiting Grady Dick. I was like, yeah, this guy will be a three-year guy. And now I'm like, no, this guy's probably going to leave after one year and potentially be a lottery pick. <laughs> like, that's is what that think- what you've heard from the staff and stuff? Yeah, like first rounder. Yeah. One and done. That's crazy. And I think yeah. that has to be their hope too. Obviously, he's getting a ton of hype. Another McDonald's top 20 five-star guy like you want those freshmen to be one and done to get more guys so i think we have a solid four besides the starting five which we've been talking about which has to be the biggest question mark and then that's not even a debate that is by far the biggest question mark right now but those four we have right now i'm super excited about i think kevin mcculler's being super underestimated he's never been a big time scorer but he's also never had to be i mean Mm -hmm. Texas Tech style, they obviously play slow, they defend, and he can defend as good as anyone. I think, man, I think we could be yeah. good defensively. And that's why I think, I, I think Ernest, I'm saying Zach for sure the X factor, but I think Ernest potentially could be because if I think, I think if Ernest becomes this really good rim protector, that this defense, like if he comes along, buys into Bill's system, starts getting it in a couple months, and he just starts taking off, I think this team is going to be so damn good. And I think they could be so good defensively because you got Dewan, who's as good as anyone defensively, McCuller, who's as good as anyone, Grady, who I don't know how good he is defensively. I cannot tell you, but I think he's obviously a prideful Kansas kid that is going to play as hard as he can. He's wanted to come to KU for years now. Jay Will knows the system, just won a national title. So we got Dewan and Jay Will with that championship pedigree. And I think, um, obviously, Kevin McCuller, I think we could be, be, yeah. That dude was meant to play for Bill Self. Yeah. He was, so, yeah. I think those four that we already said are locked into the starting lineup, I feel super confident about. Big 12 is going to be solid. Baylor's going to be good. TCU is going to be really good. Forgot about big yeah. old. <laughs> Eddie at, Lampkin. I was, I was at the casino Saturday gambling on sports, and I was talking to these dudes 
um, about college, <laughs> college basketball. And some dude goes, man, what was that, that big moose's name for TCU? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I couldn't even think of it, but I looked it up, and yeah, Eddie Lampkin, they got screwed Dude, against the Arizona in the tournament. Had so much fun with Eddie Lampkin. I loved that game. But yeah. yeah, TCU, they Mike Miles. They should have made the Sweet 16. Mike Miles is a stud. So, yeah, so the conference will be tough. I want to ask you this before we talk, like, schedule and stuff like that. If you could pick one big man and one guard, and you can't pick Dewan, Jalen, or Kevin – and really, I'll eliminate Grady Dick too, because I think he's a pretty. He's just gonna be a guy. Like I would be shocked if Grady Dick's not playing. Oh, there's so many work. heads going. So many. Names if you going could my pick head. one guard and one big man to have big years, <laughs> meaning there are sixth and seventh man, who do you want it to be? Like steps up, and they are officially like playing big time minutes come March Madness. Hmm. Would you go first or do I need to go first? I can go first. I think God, it's tough. It is so tough. I think um, Big's on between Zach and Ernest. Me too. And I think I Cam think... I think Cam could be really solid, but like you said, I don't see him being like a a game changer, you know, like a yeah. star. I think he would be super I see him solid. Like, I, play, I see him playing minutes. like a Mitch role. A Mitch role potentially is what I think Cam be, Martin could realistically I think, do. Mitch didn't get enough credit last year. I thought Mitch yeah. was – I thought he was as solid as he could be. I just want Cam Martin to – if he's not – if he doesn't have some breakout year, who knows? We could be totally wrong about Cam Martin. But if Cam Martin is in the program, I want him to just be a guy you know can come off the bench in an ugly game and just give you good minutes and not make big mistakes and just know the system. Um, but back to my original question. I think my answers. I don't Ernest. know for guard. I think it's Ernest. And then for guard, see, part of me wants to say MJ Rice because I think he has so much potential. But I think Joe Yesifu, the way he scored late in his career at Drake, those that final half of the season, like I think that is a weapon that we could desperately use this year is a guy that comes off the bench and can yeah. score. And so, like, I love Bobby Pettiford, too. Like, Bobby Pettiford seems like he was built to play point guard for Bill Self. I'm just – I don't know if it's if it's going to be there this year. So, it's mm -hmm. like I have kind of found myself – and I don't know if Joe will make that step. But, like, to me, what would leave me the most excited is if Joe Yesifu is just a guy that gets buckets off the bench all year. That's kind of what I think this team's going to need, and I would love to see that happen. I think you're deaf. I think you're spot on with the guard spot because Joe can come in and give you twenty or thirty randomly one night. I wouldn't yeah. say th I wouldn't say thirty yeah. at KU, but he can he can definitely come in and give you a twenty ball. Come in, yeah. hit four or five threes, um, get to the lane, finish around the rim. He can he can fill it up when he wants. I think Bobby would just come in and be a super solid point guard, get guys uh, yeah. involved, facilitate things like that. So I don't think the ceiling's there for um, Bobby just for this year. Eventually, maybe. But Joe yeah. can give you a ton off the bench as a sixth or seventh man with a little spark, come in, instant offense. Um, I want to say Ernest because I think he has the highest ceiling of the bigs, but I think Zach, just the way he can shoot it and stretch the floor. And we've talked about this team needing shooters. We could struggle to start the year shooting it and scoring. So I think a four or a five man, I guess, that can stretch the floor and rebound would be huge for us. So I think I'd go Zach and Joe. MJ, yeah. I, I feel like I can't pick him. I feel like we are going I, – I think we could potentially look back on this pod and be like, remember how we we hardly even talked about MJ Rice, who <laughs> but, McDonald's All-American, guy that plays so hard, plays good defense, athletic. I'm just score. feeling that, like that's not a – it's not a crazy enough pick is kind of where I'm at. Yeah. Picking MJ. I hope, yeah, because I, I think really MJ's going to be solid. Bill keeps comparing him to Wayne Selden. I think he's compared him to him ten times this offseason. So yeah. I don't – that. At first, I was hearing he had been great at practice, but I don't think that was right because they said he was kind of coming along along slowly, but he's getting there. So I think he's going to be a guy. If you think about Wayne Selden, yeah. he took a while. So maybe MJ could be a guy that's around two years. I guess Wayne yeah. was here for three, and he was damn good his junior year. People forget. Yeah. But, yeah, MJ, I kind of was thinking when, we, when MJ committed that he might be the one-and-done guy instead of Grady, and now I'm all in yeah. on Grady. 
Yeah. I just want to put a disclaimer with this pod. Like, everything we say in this pod could look so stupid in literally a month. Like, that's what's so hard about predicting these teams is because guys just – we've said it. Like, Relaford, Withy, those guys those guys just stepped up. But you never know who's it, who it's going to be. But somebody Man. will. It's just hard to pick who it'll be. But Thinking about – just thinking about that 2009 team again, just the starting lineup. Brady was, Morningstar played was, tons of minutes. It was the starting lineup was Sharon, uh, Tyshawn, Brady, Marcus Morris, and Cole Aldridge. It's wild. Two it freshmen. And two. Brady Morningstar was wearing sleeves down to his wrists, um, <laughs> wearing the t shirt under the jersey. And then, I mean, that's the thing with Sharon, too. He was obviously damn good. Um, freshman and sophomore year, as solid as you could get off the bench for the national championship team, you kind of knew what you were getting, but you didn't fully know what you were getting with Sharon mm-hmm. that junior year. I feel like, like you knew, you knew he was going to have to go off for this team, but you didn't know if he would, and he did. Cole was barely played that his freshman year. He played against Hansborough in the Final Four, but all those guys just ended up stepping up, and they go fourteen and two in the Big Twelve, and I think OU was they had Blake Griffin and Willie Warren that year, so yeah. I'm sure the Big Twelve was super solid. We lost early in the Big Twelve tournament, but Bill just finds a way, and these guys buy in. That's the that's the thing you hear the most about Bill. He gets people to buy in, gets people to do certain things, gets the people going. I don't, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so I want to. I don't want us to not talk about Jalen. Because, like, Jalen is in Come that spot in. where we've seen guys like T-Rob. We've seen Sharon, as you mentioned, Devonte. Like, he's the guy that came back from a really stacked team that is going from kind of the third, fourth best player to now he has to be the best player. And that's a big – I mean, most of the guys we've seen under Bill Self, they take that – and they handle it perfectly fine. Like they they take on that role and they thrive. You said earlier you think Jalen scores 15 a game. I think that's absolutely possible. Like how Over. how confident are you that Jalen Wilson will truly have one of those special seasons like we saw Devontae, T Rob, Ochai, guys that made that decision to come back? How confident are you? I mean, I said 15. I would take the over on that. I think he's gonna be around 17, 18 a night. I think he's – I feel insanely confident about Jay Will this year. He put in a ton of work last summer. He's he, – I mean, you've read it, the articles that came out. He was putting a ton of pressure on himself after he got in trouble last year before the year. He struggled to start the year. His numbers don't look amazing from last year, but we even talked about it to end the year. He could have been a second team, third team, all Big 12 guy, but – He was very – It good. felt like he got – shafted based off his non-con performance yep. but big 12 play i t- i forget what the numbers were exactly i tweeted it to those guys saying that he stunk i think he averaged 13 and 8 is what i yeah. i'm pretty sure so yeah close to a double double in big 12 play and he started big 12 playoff slow he's been putting in a ton of work this summer this is going to sound stupid but he looked really freaking smooth at the late night scrimmage i don't care yeah. it just looked different he looks, he looks, this is this. my first takeaway from late night scrimmage was he looks way more um, agile and in shape and conditioned. And like I remember a, watching exactly the like combine. Ochai. I remember watching the combine thinking it would only been like two months. And I was like, whoa, Jalen just looks like he's got a little more of a pep in his step. That's what it is. And, and so I, I agree. I think Jalen. We said it, scoring could be a big question mark this year, so he's got to do it. And here's what Jalen's going to do this year that he has not done as well as we thought he would when he came into KU, and that's make threes. And I think he's going to have a really good shooting year. We've seen it with guys. You hit that senior year, and you just make shot. Like Frank. Frank was a 50% three-point shooter his senior year. Ochai shot lights out. Um, I just think Jalen's going to have 40%. one of those years where, I mean, that's what Jalen was known for when he committed to KU is like being a shooter. And it really hasn't, and it's been a pleasant surprise to see him be like this grinder, go in and get rebounds, get offensive putbacks, slasher type player. But I think he's going to add a whole new thing to his game this year where he's hitting shots and you're not going to be able to give him space. He'll pull up and hit it in your face. So like, I don't know. I'm excited for that aspect of Jalen's game to step up this year because I think he's had it. 
I just, for whatever reason, he's never gotten enough in a flow for it to be consistent. But the, you just can tell, and like you said, at late night, his jumper just looked smooth. That, and he looks so conditioned, just like Ochai, dude. It's crazy. I can just tell. 26% from three last year, which I cannot believe. I'm sure. I wonder what it was in Big 12 play. Because I thought, yeah. and I just looked, he was 33 that sophomore year, whatever year he is now. He's been here. He had that year where he was hurt. But sophomore year, it felt like he shot it better than that. Maybe that was the start of the year. Because I remember me tweeting about him going to go pro after that year. I thought he looked that good at one point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think he's going to have an awesome year. He had, I just looked, he had seven double doubles last year. How many, how many double doubles would you guess? Or what would you set the over under? How many would you guess he has this year? Cause we might struggle to rebound from the big spot from the big, he's going to have five spots. So dude, he McCuller. could have, he really could. He's not going to be as good as T Rob, but he could do have a T Rob year numbers wise, or maybe, maybe like a, maybe a Diedrich Lawson type year. I think yeah. T-Rob was nearly uh, national player of the year, so that's tough to say. But maybe like a Diedrich where you're 18 and 10 or whatever Diedrich. I mean, if we play 35 games, I would definitely 40? think Jalen gets uh, more than 15 double-doubles. Like, is that crazy? I don't know. This is very no. off the cuff. I, I don't think, think so. He could easily get 15-plus double-doubles, but – also averaging yeah, 13, he's gonna have to rebound. Also averaging thirteen and eight last year in Big Twelve play, when you can make a case, I mean this might be the case. He was the fourth option. You got Ochai, CB, first round picks, all Big Dave. Twelve type guys. Dave, who they go into all the time, especially in clutch situations. And uh, J Will wasn't even the. I mean, he was struggling before Big Twelve play, so you could easily make the case he was the fourth. I think he was the fourth option. Best case, he was the third. And he still averaged yeah. 13 and eight on that team. So it's not even crazy to think he's going to average 15. It, it might be, we might be too low there. Yeah. If he averaged 13 I, and eight against a really good conference as the fourth option, what's the ceiling for him this year? He could average 18, 20. My prediction is like just me being trying to be realistic and not get crazy to protect <laughs> myself. I'll say 16 and nine, but that's with me assuming nice. I think Kevin McCuller is, I think he's going to put up some points too. Like, I think he's going to be a little better at scoring than maybe we are giving he, him credit for. I think he might score a couple buckets this year. He will. And he's going to guard the ball. He's going to guard. Dude. Him and Dewan can guard anyone, and I think those two, those got to be two of the top ten defenders in the country. Maybe I'm biased there. There's obviously a ton of bas college basketball teams. They're up there though, so I think yeah. if the rest of the guys buy in, Jay Will's probably gonna have to put a ton of energy into um, scoring it on the offensive side. So he might not be as good defensively, but I think Grady could be there. I think we have a ton of bigs, like we got KJ, Zach, Cam, Ernest, Zuby for the bigs. I guess you can count KJ. I don't even know what position he is anymore. <laughs> yeah. But one of those guys could play the five and be really good defensively, um, rebound, protect the rim. So I think this team could be super good defensively. I think Jay Will's going to score it at will. He's going to have to is my thing. That's why I think he's going to average like 18 a night because yeah. he's going to have to score. Yeah. There's going to be nights – there. there's undoubtedly going to be nights we're scoring 50 or 60 points. I mean, I don't think that's yeah. even crazy to sit. There's just going to be off nights with this team shooting it. Grady as a true freshman, he'll have big nights, but he's also going to struggle maybe on the road in the Big 12 and things like that. So I think Jay Will can fill it up this year. Dewan's going to take that step offensively, scoring it. McCuller has been waiting to show out offensively. He's going to guard, and I think we're going to be I, we're going to win the Big 12 or take second, get a two seed. We're just yeah. spoiled. It's insane. I think early in the year we're going to see some ugly games. Like I think back to that that 2020 game again or 2019 2020 game against Duke where we had like I don't even remember how many turnovers, a ton, but it was just ugly, it was gross. Um I think we could see that early with this team, but I think this team's going to be in every game. Like I don't think we're going to be getting blown out because I think we're going to play good enough defense to stick around against like I don't know how good Duke Duke's going to be really young so it's hard to say but who knows I think that game's going to be gross ugly I have no idea who will win but 
I don't think you can confidently say Duke or KU is the clear favorite. I don't mm-hmm. know. I think it'll be less than four points. So, but I think we're just going to have to be ready to deal with some gross basketball and trust that this offense will figure it out. Grady Dick will get more confident. Somebody will step up. Zach will get better. Like, but there's going to be some growing pains like we saw with 09, like we saw with 2012. And we're just going to have to deal with it and be in, you know, winning a national title makes it a little easier. You yeah. I'll give this team a little more breathing room. Yeah. And uh, you just kind of got to sit back and realize that you have the best coach in college basketball. Yes. So Can't I don't debate it. That's why obviously I'm excited for the season, but I just, I feel spoiled because I know what we're about to get. Yeah. We're going to compete for a conference tie. It sounds so cocky, but I feel like I'm, I'm grown now. I'm a grown man. <laughs> I, I just understand, I guess. Like what we got, Bill Self. We're gonna compete for a Big Twelve title. We're gonna have a good seed in the tournament. We're gonna have a chance to make the second weekend, play for a Final Four. I just yep. I, let me lay out real quick, and then we'll wrap this up. Here's how the season's gonna go. This is the script you need every year for a KU season. We're gonna look. We're gonna struggle a little bit. We're gonna look ugly early. Um, <laughs> Twitter is going to be furious at whoever starts at the five. Um, <laughs> whether that be Zach or Ernest, everyone's going to be mad. They're going to be saying, we should have had Dave come back, which is funny because we all hated Dave last year. Dave was that char- playing that character. Um, then about mid-season in conference play, people are going to get frustrated if we struggle a little bit because Dewan's not good enough and Dewan should have taken a bigger step. And should have you know, transferred. Where is he? he? He's, he's, He's a junior now. He needs to be better. And then he'll never be friends with Devontae. Yeah. Question marks about Jalen. Jalen wasn't ready to be the man of this team. And then come February, March, the flip will switch. Bill so so good. Flip, and the team will all come together and we'll be rolling into March as a one or a two seed, having won or taken second in the Big 12 and everything will be okay. That's just what happens. That's a that's the script for a KU basketball season. I don't yep. know if there's going to be any Remy Martin type scripts built in. Last year was a little different, but <laughs> it's just that's how it is and it's kind of yeah. nice that we have it on autopilot. Exactly. And think about the things people said about Bill Self after we lost to TCU, just about the rotation and the guys that were playing and that they were soft and now our fans are all in on him being the best coach in college basketball and everyone should be. And yeah. we're going to be spoiled forever as long as he's here. 2008, you lose every starter. You win the Big 12, lose yeah. like five games, almost make the Final Four again. So you're always going to be in a good spot. They've always said, we don't rebuild, we reload. And that's, yeah. I mean, it really is true. If you listen to this podcast, you would think we're talking about a team that's starting fifth in the Big 12 and is returning nobody. This is a top five team. Like it's crazy. We're talking about you lose two team. first rounders. You <laughs> lose three starters. You lose your yeah. first three options on offense. Scoring yeah. options. And we're still a top five team. Which who knows? I don't. I don't think we're necessarily a top five team right now. But I'm confident we will be potentially by March. So it just that's how it goes. Things will be. Things will be good. It's going to be a really fun year because we get to sit back knowing we won the title. We can relax about Bill getting number two, and we can just genuinely enjoy watching this team come together that's going to be my goal don't yeah. let some stupid performance early in the year get me fired up i'm just going to sit back enjoy bill got his second title that's all i've wanted mm-hmm. and now let's just watch guys like grady dick mj rice Ernest. let's watch them develop, develop. yeah so. and obviously you want to win every game you never want to lose especially ku fans we lose four or five times a year and it's an all-time meltdown <laughs> There's no reason to melt down over regular season games anymore, especially after at TCU last year, and then they run the table and went out. Yeah. They're going to lose games. You can't run the table and go 40-0. and 0. Like, you're going to lose some games. Don't melt down. Like you said, let these freshmen develop. Stop taking your anger out on Dewan Harris, one <laughs> of the most valuable players on the team. Even though he doesn't score, you guys are just spoiled with point guards. You've went from Sharon to Tyshawn to Frank to Devontae to Devon Dotson. So you're just spoiled with scoring point guards. Yep. We're just spoiled in general. Sit back and enjoy the ride. You got the best coach in the country. That was perfect. That was beautiful. Well said. So I think I'm Let's good go wrapping it up this there. Weekend. 
<laughs> yeah, let's go get a win. Um, we may, A, B, and B turn may try and hop on to a quick Oklahoma State preview if time allows later in the week. I don't know. We'll see. If not, Hawks need one win to go bowling, and uh, that's it. Thank you, as always, for listening. Rock Chalk. Thank <laughs> you.